Hi kids. In the previous part, we had learned about rational numbers. Now we learn about irrational numbers. What do you mean by irrational numbers? Irrational numbers are the numbers which are not perfect square. Say for example, square root of 6. 6 is not a perfect square. But if I take square root of 4, which is 2, that is a rational number. But all irrational numbers are not perfect squares. They are not perfect cube. I'll write it down so that they are not perfect square. They are not perfect cubes. Then they are all non-terminating decimal. And the last one is they are not repeating decimal. They do not repeat. So all non-recurring, all non-terminating, all non-perfect square, not perfect cube, they are all irrational numbers. Okay, let's check whether the numbers are rational or irrational. Let's do few sums from the exercise 1c from RS Agarwal. Say, for example, if I take cube root of 8, how do we represent it in an exponential form? It is 8 to the power 1 by 3, right? And how do you write 8? 8 is 2 cube times 1 by 3. So, you are getting the answer 2. So, yes, this is a rational number. It is not an irrational number. Then, let's take an example which is very important. It is pi. Kids, always remember pi is a irrational number because it is not terminating. You will get 3.14 and so on and on and on. It is not terminating, so it is an irrational number. But if they gave you the question 22 upon 7, this is a rational number. Why? Because the denominator is not equal to 0. So this is a rational number, but this is an irrational number. I hope it's clear. Let's do one more sum. Now, how do you check whether it is rational or irrational? First, you have to understand the pattern. Say, the pattern is 2, 0, 2, 0, but here it is 2, 2. So, it is non-repeating. So, all non-repeating numbers are irrational. So, this is an irrational number. Okay, coming to the next part. The main part which is representing a irrational number on a real line. We represented rational number on a number line. Then how do you represent an irrational number on a real line? Say for example, I want to represent root 2. Okay. Now always the pattern, follow this pattern. It will, when you have to bifurcate or switch it in such a way that always you will have to add 1. So if I want to get 2, I will do 1 plus 2. For example, if I want root 5, I will do plus 1 I need. So, this would be 4 plus 1. If I need root 7, I will do plus 1 and here I will do 6. This is the first pattern that you need to follow. Okay, let's do root 2 first. Now, what does it mean? This is your x-axis and this is x dash. Okay. Here on the real line, you will always start from 0. 0, 1, 2. Okay. We don't have negative numbers for on a real line. Then, this represents your y-axis which is vertical. This represents your x-axis which is horizontal. So, from 1, if you take this as 1 unit and from here you draw a 1 unit, you will get a right angle triangle. Okay, so this I, I want only one unit on the x-axis. So from 0, I have to take one unit. So since from here also I have to take a one unit, first thing I will draw an arc 60 degree, 120 degree. Okay, from these two points, I am going to draw the bisector. I draw a line from there. Okay, now 
check what is the measurement you have taken for one unit the same measurement you will take from here also this is one unit so from here also this will become one unit now join this line remember this this is a right angle triangle this is one this is one you have to find hypotenuse what is the formula hypotenuse square is equal to 1 square base square plus height square so hypotenuse square is equal to 1 plus 1 which is 2 so hypotenuse will be equal to root 2 right same thing over here you do so keeping the pointer of the compass over here from here you are going to draw a line this represents your root 2 i hope it's clear come on let's do root 3 also So, root 3 can be written as root 2 plus 1, right? We got here root 2, right? From root 2, we have to again draw one unit on the y-axis. So, from this point, you are going to draw an arc again. 60 degree, 120 degree. From root 2, where it touches the x-axis, okay? Now, this becomes your 90 degree, draw a line touching the root 2 ok now same thing 1 unit so from here also you take 1 unit which is this ok now join this line from 0 now this becomes keeping the pointer here draw an arc over here this becomes your root 3 ok come on let's do root 5 also root 4 plus 1 right now what is root 4 root 4 is 2 ok remember that we will use that this is x1 this is x 0 1 2 ok so this is 2 plus you have to take 1 right so from here you are taking 2 units from here again you will draw an arc 630 degree 60 degree. In between this two, draw a bisector. This becomes your 90 degree. What is the measurement of one unit? The same measurement you will take from here. Cut this. Now, join this line. Okay. Now, see here, it's a right angle triangle. This is two units. This is one unit. So, two square plus one square. Four plus one which is 5, so hypotenuse would be root 5. Now, keeping the pointer over here, keeping the pointer over here, draw an arc like this. This represents your root 5. Okay, I hope it's clear. Now, for example, if you want to draw root 6, from root 5, again you draw an arc, 630 degree, 60 degree, draw the bisector, take one unit measurement, Cut it, join this line, this becomes your root 6. I hope it's clear. So always the first step is bifurcate plus 1 and then take how many units. You know you are going to make use of Pythagoras theorem here also to draw all irrational numbers. Generally the irrational numbers that you get during exams is root 2, root 3, root 5, root 6 root 7 or root 10. You will not get beyond that. Okay? Come on. Let's go to the next part. Okay. In the previous video, we had found rational numbers uh, between two given rational numbers. In the same way, if we want to find uh, irrational number between two irrational number, how do we do it? Say for example, I want to find an irrational number between 2 and 2.5. I want to find an irrational number, not a rational number. Okay. So, how we used to do for rational number? It is half of the sum. Over here, the formula is root AB where this represents A and this represents B. 
so this will become root of 2 into 2.5 which is root 5 this would be your irrational number between these two what if they say find one more irrational number between this two so you will take either this two or you will take this two okay say for example if i want to find one more rational number so the formula is same root a b i want to find between these two so root a b what is a over here it is 2 what is b over here it is root 5 right so this will become a noun square root so this will become 2 square root is represented in exponential form as 1 by 2 now this is 5 square root is 1 by 2 another square root is again 1 by 2 so the answer would be 2 1 by 2 into 5 1 by 4 is it clear let's do one more sum Say if I want to find two irrational numbers between 2 root 3 and 3 root 5. In the previous sum, they had given you, we had we were using whole numbers, but now these are both irrational numbers. So what will you do? So your first thing when the irrational numbers are given to you, take it in square root form and find the square. Whenever irrational number is given to you and they have asked you to find irrational, it is easier if you just square it. So this will become square root of 2 square is 4, root 3 times root 3 is 3. So it is root 12. Okay, same way. Root 3 root 5 the whole square. Okay, so this is equal to 3 times 3 is 9 root 5 times root 5 is 5 so it is root 45 now you have to find two rational numbers between root 12 and root 45 you can take up any number root 13 root 17 whatever you will get many since the gap is more you will get many irrational numbers so whenever there are two ways to do the irrational find uh, rash, uh, irrational numbers between two given numbers if two irrational numbers are given, you will take the square, square root of and square it. And if whole number is given to you, the formula is root of AB. Okay, come on, let's go to the next part. Now, let's do few questions where we have to find the value. Say, if I want to find the value of 2 root 3, the whole square, what does it mean? It means 2 root 3 times 2 root 3, right? 2 times 2 is 4, root 3 times root 3 is 3. So answer is 12. Root 5 times root 5 is 5. Root 7 times root 7 is 7. Why it is so? See, it's very simple. See, root 3 times root 3 is root 9 what is the square root of 9 it is 3 right come on let's do one more sum root 2 plus root 3 the whole square this for this you are going to use an identity which is a plus b the whole square which is a square plus b square plus 2ab so here this is a this is b so it is root 2 the whole square plus root 3 the whole square plus 2 into root 2 into root 3 okay so root 2 square is 2 root 3 square is 3 plus 2 root 2 into 3 is 6. So answer is 5 plus 2 root 6. Now if a question would have been asked, check whether it is a rational number or an irrational number. So a sum of rational and an irrational number is always an irrational number. Okay. Now if a question is, Check whether this is an irrational number or a rational number. How will you do it? So first thing, the denominator, you will have to rationalize it. How do you rationalize it? 
by multiplying it with the same number. So times root 3 upon root 3. So this will become 2 root 3 and root 3 times root 3 is 3. So here if you see product of a rational number and an irrational number is a, is a irrational number. Okay. Come on let's proceed ahead. Now we have to prove that root 2 is an irrational number. It's a huge step but it's very easy. Just understand the concept. So first thing we will assume that let root 2 be a rational number. If it's, a, if it's a rational number, it is of the form p upon q where q is not equal to 0. So root 2 is equal to p upon q where q is not equal to 0. Okay. Now squaring on both the sides. Root 2 into root 2 you will get 2 is equal to p square upon q square. Right. Cross multiply this. So 2q square is equal to p square. That means p is an even number. p is a multiple of 2. p is a multiple of 2. This is what we understood from this. Why? Because it is multiplying with 2. Right? Now the next part of the part is you will say that p is equal to 2 into m where m is an integer. It can be any integer. Okay? Now squaring again on both the sides. You will get p square is equal to 4m square. Right? But what is p square? p square is 2q square. So that we are going to substitute here. 2q square is equal to 4m square. So q square is equal to 4m square upon 2 which is 2. So what does it mean? It means that q is also multiple of 2. p is a multiple of 2. Q is a multiple of 2. So what would the common factor be? Common factor between P and Q would be 2. But what we had assumed? We had assumed that root 2 is a rational number. So if it's a rational number, a rational number has common factor as 1 only. Since it is in its simplest form. So therefore, this contradicts our assumption. So we say that root 2 is a irrational number. Are you clear? So what step you will write after this? Since P and Q has common factor 2 but we had assumed that root 2 is a rational number where the common factor should be 1 only. So this contradicts our statement. So we say that root 2 is a irrational number. Now in, uh, in for example instead of root 2 if they give you root 3. So same pattern you will follow root 3, root 3. So here you will get P is a multiple of 3, Q is a multiple of 3. So the common factor is 3 but it contradicts our statement. The same thing if it is root 7 you will get P is a multiple of 7, Q is a multiple of 7. So the common factor is 7 and the same pattern you will follow. I hope it's clear. Come on let's move to the next part. Now, the next question is, I have to find two irrational numbers between root 14 and root 19. Two irrational numbers. So, after root 14 comes root 15. This is an irrational. It's neither a perfect square nor a perfect cube. Root 16 is 4. So, we can't take that. Root 17 we can take. Root 18 we can take. Okay. Either you can do this way or if you don't get the answer, then you can follow by squaring. If you put it in root and square it, you will get the answer. You will get a wider gap and you can derive the answer. I hope it's clear. So we have completed the third exercise of RS Agarwal. Let's move to the fourth one. Let's end here. Stay connected in my next video for the rest of the exercise. Till then, bye, take care and thanks for watching my video.